Good morning, church. Happy to be with you yet again this week. We're going to talk today specifically about perspective. Perspective when it comes to our Christian faith. I was thinking about how to begin this morning, and what hit me most is thinking about, uh, let's say you're enlisted in a race, to run a race. We'll look at running right now. You're going to run a race, but you're not told how long the race is, where the finish line is, uh, where the path is going to be. You're just running. And that race, you don't know how to train for it. You don't know how long it's going to last. You don't know how to pace yourself. You don't know anything about it other than you're running. And it's a race. There's a finish line, at least you think, but you don't know what that finish line is. I think a lot of us experience the Christian life a lot like that. And we don't think of faith as having a finish line. We kind of think of it as, hey, let's just survive this world and all that's going on in it, get by, and then we die and go be with Jesus, which is partially true. There's much more to our faith than that, and specifically when it comes to a finish line. It's not just me that struggles with this. I know. I've talked to a lot of people, and we get lost very easily. We become like a ship without a rudder uh, and, and with the wind blowing in all different directions. We're basically at the mercy of, of the culture, cultural winds that are blowing through, and we even end up adopting other goals for our faith. But here's the thing. There's a lot at stake when it comes to us keeping in mind the goal of the Christian faith. Because when we lose sight of God's goal for us, there are two things at stake that can easily be lost. The first one is our identity as Christians, our God-given identity, that we can start thinking what the world tells us about our identities, that we can be anything we want. We can, uh, basically our, our identities can shift, form, morph. And, and I'm just talking about who we are as human beings. But no, God has given us an identity and we're going to look at it today. The other thing that's at stake is um, our calling or our purpose as the church. We can easily, if we lose sight of our goal, we can lose sight of our calling and our purpose as a church. And then we start adopting other purposes that are out there. We'll, we'll talk in a second about what some of those could be. But we end up frustrated, discouraged, aimless, at the mercy of culture, and we're just trying to survive. I've been there. Uh, it reminded me, I, I heard this story when I first became a Christian uh, almost 30 years ago. And it was about a woman named Florence Chadwick. And in 1952, she set out to swim from the California coast, uh, Southern California coast, out to Catalina, which is about 26 miles. That was her goal. She took along a team with her, and that team came alongside of her in a boat. Their goal was to make sure that sharks didn't get her, which is a good thing, and to make sure that, uh, you know, if she was injured, they could help, or if anything unexpected came up, they would be there. And so that morning, she set out on this swim, 26 miles. She got out there. She was going, going. It was like 12, 12 hours, so forth and so on. Her time went on, and she started getting really tired. And then what happened, and this changed everything, is fog, thick fog set in. She could no longer see the island. She could no longer see her goal. And that thick fog eventually led to her saying, I can't do this. And she stopped. She couldn't see her goal. She stopped. She got in the boat. When the fog cleared, she realized she was a mile from her goal, a mile from shore. She had swam 25, had a mile left, but couldn't see it and gave up. And I think a lot of that us are like that when it comes to the Christian faith. We don't know what the goal is. We don't think in, in minds of that, or in, in that kind of mindset. And then when the fogs of life come in, and we've had a lot of them lately, a lot of things that, that are just, our world is, is in a very different place and some good things are happening, some hard things are happening. We've got a virus, a pandemic, and these fogs of life, they distract us from our big picture goal. So what we're gonna look at briefly this morning is what is our goal. What's God's goal for us when it comes to the Christian faith? Paul talks about this goal, and I'm going to read out of Philippians 3, as soon as I can turn here, 13 and 14. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He's talking about his goal. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining toward what is ahead, 
I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on towards the goal. Now, if we just leave it at that, we get to determine what that goal is because he doesn't talk about it specifically there. He does in another passage, a few other passages. So we could say, well, that goal Paul's talking about is, you know, we can come up with our own. We're going to be better people. We are going to achieve the best kind of happiness that we can achieve in this life. We are going to have more Bible knowledge. We are going to be known for, you know, whatever. We come up with these goals and, and, and for ourselves and for our churches without a clear picture of God's goal. But the cool thing is, though Paul doesn't talk specifically in Philippians 3, he does in a number of other passages talk specifically about what it is. So let's go to Romans 8, 29 and 30. Eight is, uh, Romans 8 is an amazing passage where Paul just lays out over and over again all the blessings of, of being in Christ. And he writes this in 8, 29. He says, For those that God foreknew, he also predestined. He predetermined. What did he predetermine them to do? He predestined them to be conformed to the image of his son, to be changed, to become more like Jesus. And he goes on to say that, uh, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, talking about Jesus. And then he goes on to say, and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So what is God's goal for us? That we are conformed into the image of Jesus, his son. See, the goal for the Christian life is that we experience God's transforming power day in and day out and become more and more like Jesus. We're conformed into the image of Jesus. Okay, so that's the goal. It's a big goal. Uh, Jesus was the perfect son of God. He was God in human flesh. So left to our own power, we can't do it. And we'll talk about that. But when do we reach this goal? Do we reach it tomorrow? Do we reach it in the next day? Do we reach it next week? Let's look at 1 John. I think a lot of you know where I'm going with this. But 1 John 3, 2 through 3, let's see what John has to say about this. He says this, Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. So when will we be fully like Jesus? When Christ appears. When we see Jesus face to face, we will be like him. So it's the next life. What, what about what about this life? You know, I, I would love to wake up tomorrow and be like Jesus, 100%. But what, what we're learning here from John is that's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen over time, and it's going to be fulfilled when we see Jesus face to face. That's our hope that we have. That's the goal, and that's our hope. Well, in the meantime, let's look at what it means for us. And I'm going to turn to 2 Corinthians 3.18 which he talks about in the meantime. Well, what does life look like for us? We know the goal is to be like Jesus, to be transformed by God, to become like Jesus. We know that fully will be fulfilled when we see him face to face. Well, what about the here and now? Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians 3, 18. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is spirit. So we are being transformed. It's passive. God does the transforming. We put ourselves in a place to be changed, but God does it, but it's passive. God changes us to be more and more like Jesus. And we're in the meantime, that's what's happening. So when the coronavirus hits, we can choose to, to, to freak out, react, you know, and there's cause to be concerned, but we can also know that God is going to use that to bring about his goal in us, which is to make us like Jesus. In the midst of all that's going on in America with race and, and, the, and the chaos and the injustice, we can go in and we can be uh, advocates for people and show love. That's part of God's transforming power. We can also realize that God is going to use that to make his people more and more like Jesus. So there's two realities here that we need to keep in mind. The first one is... <laughs> God makes us, God transforms us to be like Jesus, 
but our goal is Jesus. That's our destiny, is that we will look like Jesus. Now, it's funny, when I teach kids this, um, because I spend a lot of time with kids and youth, the younger kids will ask, well, does that mean I'll physically look like Jesus? Like I'll have a beard and I'll wear sandals and a robe. And the answer is no. We're not talking about a physical uh, looking like Jesus transformation. We're talking about the character and personhood of who God is. And so a great picture of that, this is the last scripture passage we'll look at today, is Galatians 5, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is God's character. It's who God is. And he writes this, Paul, in Galatians 5, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's huge right now. It's huge all the time, but definitely right now. Joy, peace, forbearance, which is patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Day in and day out, God's goal for us is to become more like that because that's Jesus' character. It's not us creating, it's God transforming us. But that's the goal that we have to keep in mind. Through everything that we face, the joys, the trials, the hardships, the pains, the laughter, the crying, whatever it is, God's bringing about his goal in us to make us more like Jesus. That's the perspective we need to have. We don't want to end up like Florence Chadwick who gave up in the last mile because she couldn't see her goal. We can see our goal. It's Jesus and becoming more like him. Now that Florence Chadwick story has a, a, a great ending. So about two months later, when she gave up at the, at the 25th mile, she gave it another shot. And uh, she, in the middle of it, the thick fog set in yet again, but because she had a picture in her mind of her goal, she saw the island, even though she couldn't see it amidst all the fog, she could see it in her mind, she kept going, and she made it. And she did it two more times after that. She also became the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions in record time. But you think back on what she learned that day in the California Ocean, somewhere between, I don't know, what is it, San Pedro and uh, Catalina. She learned that even though maybe I physically can't see my goal, I can still see it in here, and I need to focus on that. And that truth stands for us today. No matter what sets in the fogs of life that keep us, try to keep us from seeing Jesus, we can focus on him and say, that's what God is doing in me. And what's crazy is we can then go, okay, when I one day, let's say uh, tomorrow, let's say I go to sleep tonight angry uh, and unforgiving towards the person, but I wake up tomorrow, my heart is starting to change and I'm starting to forgive. That's when I know God is doing his thing because naturally left to myself, I will hold a grudge. But when God starts coming to me through his spirit and changing me and I wake up with a heart that says, I know I need to forgive and I want to, Lord, help me. That's when I know God's accomplishing his goal in me. So in a sense, it becomes kind of a measuring stick for us to grow because we start realizing that Christ's character is being formed in us by God's power. There's a, a, a true story about a painter in the early 20th century. And for those of you that may be art experts, um, it's a French name, so I'm going to do my best. But it was uh, Georges Rule. And he was a painter, but his, his whole desire was that he would teach people to see Jesus in a new way. And what he did was he stepped out of the tradition of the day and he was kind of a rebel using uh, bright colors and dark black lines to create these pictures of Jesus, recreating pictures from the Gospels. And, and his paintings hung uh, at that time, you know, by Matisse's paintings. Who else? I wrote this down. Uh, Picasso's paintings. And during his 60 years of life and his 60 years of, 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 of painting, he painted uh, thousands of, of pictures. But he had one favorite subject, and it was Jesus. And he had hundreds upon hundreds of pictures of Jesus. And when asked why he was so obsessed with painting Jesus, here was his answer. He said this, my life's goal is to paint a portrait of Christ so moving, whoever looks on him will be immediately converted. 
And I thought about that as it relates to God's goal for us. This is what God wants to do with our lives. He wants to paint on the canvas of our lives a portrait of Jesus so moving that everyone who looks at us will see Jesus. That's huge. That's God's goal for us. And if that's God's goal for us is to paint this portrait this, of, of Jesus on us, then it should be our goal for us too, for ourselves as individuals and ourselves as a community. Because that identity of the image of Christ in us is an individual identity, but it's also a corporate identity for God's people. And honestly, I believe that the more God does his work in us, we surrender and he starts to tra- or continues to transform us more and more through the power of Jesus and the power of the spirit, we'll respond in ways that Jesus would respond with love, with grace, with justice, with peace, with patience, and with the desire to see change in our world. Why? Because I'm fighting with my power? No. Because Christ is making me more like him. And the character of God is the natural overflow of who I am. That's my hope and dream for me, my family, and and our community of faith. So I'm going to close with prayer. I thank you for just spending a few minutes with me this morning. I hope the rest of your day is a blessing. And I hope today you'll choose to see everything that comes at you through the lens of our goal as as Christians, God's transformation of us to become more and more like Jesus every day. Lord, um, I pray that you would make us more and more like Jesus every day. We could surrender, give us a heart of surrender to lay ourselves down, that we could be a witness that everyone who looks at us sees Jesus and is blown away by the beauty of who he is. Not the beauty of who we are, but who he is. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great rest of your day.